What up everyone? Welcome back to Stack's YouTube channel. Have you ever wanted to know what makes one stem different from another stem? Today we're going to do an explain and review on the Aaron Ross Signature Odyssey Bob Stem. Before we go into all the details about this stem, we want to tell you how you can win some free stuff um, on our YouTube channel. So hang tight and watch the end of the video and we'll explain a little bit more. Also, we're going to tell you where you can buy this stem and all the little details about it and what makes one stem different than the other and why you should buy this stem. So, yeah, pretty much this is Aaron Ross' signature stem. If you don't know who Aaron Ross is, he's a, how do you say, an all-American country boy from Texas and he does a bunch of cool stuff. He's a veteran in BMX. He does a... Tail webs, 360s, um, gnarly backwards grinds, half caps onto rails, and just a whole bunch of different things that just separates like the men from the boys. And he was definitely lucky enough to get a signature stem from Odyssey, which is a brand that he's been riding for for a very long time. So yeah, let's kind of check out why his stem is the way it is, and um, you know, I mean, all the little details about it. So. You might know that you know. I mean, a stem is what holds on your handlebars onto your forks or your bicycle. And uh, there's a lot of little things about different stems that make them more money, or you know, I mean, a little bit less more money, or a little less money. So basically, the the different uh, machining and the different materials that they use actually creates the cost of the the stem. So let's talk a little bit about that and then we'll go into kind of the geometry and what makes one stem different from the other. So basically there's a couple different ways that they make stems and uh, they definitely increase the price or create the, the cost to be a little bit lower. So there's basically two types of uh, stems and how they're processed and made. So there's one that where it's uh, drop forge aluminum. So they take a lot of little chunks of aluminum and they throw it into pretty much a little compactor with a little mold in there and it compacts it and then it makes uh, a stem. So it makes the mold of the stem. So you've seen stems like the, the Sunday uh, free stem and then uh, there's a couple other stem, you know, stems that are made by other brands. But you know, I mean, that, that stem is something similar to that process and basically it uses that process to make the stem a little bit cheaper. So having a machine just, you know, I mean, non-stop compressing this material and making the little forms of the stem, it actually makes the, the cost of the stem a lot cheaper. Now, the second way that's uh, not necessarily, I don't want to say it's stronger, but it's a little bit more tried and true because you know there's no air pockets or anything like that in there. So the other way is basically they take a, uh, a solid block of aluminum and the solid block of aluminum is usually poured into like a long long square or something like that and then they cut it up and then they put it into a, a machine called a CNC machine and basically a CNC is a 3D uh, tooling system that actually uses an X, Y, and Z um, points on it and they use different tooling on it in order to to basically grind down or machine down the actual part so it's a little bit more of a process and it kind of gives it a different look and feel. So that's basically what this, this is made out of. Uh, it's made out of a 6061-T6 uh, aluminum and it's made out of a solid chunk aluminum and they put it in a machine and basically there's a, there's a couple different processes. So they basically hold it down, they machine out a certain part, then they bolt it down and then they keep flipping it um, until they actually get the, the final product. So CNC is a little bit crazier because it takes a very, very wise man to actually think of all the tooling to, to machine it down. And they have to use X, Y, and Z, which is, you know I mean, digital space, which is uh, up and down, or up and down, and left and right. And then they also have to think about forward and backwards. So that's like a 3D space. Um, it's kind of similar to like After Effects in the editing, uh, editing world. So it makes a, a tool go in 3D space. And then on top of that, it's only at the center. So they have tooling that actually is thicker. So you have to accommodate for that thickness of that tool or how the tool is shaped. And then that point has to be at a certain point 
where it actually touches the material and then actually grinds down or machines down the actual product. So it takes a lot of ingenuity and a lot of thought process for somebody to be able to machine down a part. And then on top of that, you can only get to the part going from one direction. So the person that's running the machine actually physically has to take it out of the machine, flip it around, put some more clamps on it or a bolt down and then machine the next process. And some stems take longer than others, so just that in general creates it to be a little bit more expensive. But when you look at the actual final product, it has a very, very cool look to it and almost looks a little bit more industrial or a little bit more manly. So uh, me personally, and I think a lot of other writers tend to like CNC machines, uh, machine stems, basically because it looks a little bit more manly and it's more of a try and true process. So you can get a better quality product out of something that's machined. So it's very, very cool that they machined this stem out of a solid chunk of aluminum. And they did a lot of different things to this, which I noticed straight off the bat. Um, basically, they took a lot of the material off. They took, made a lot of pockets on the bottom. They made a lot of pockets on the side, uh, on the top right here. Even the cap and the, the bottom of the actual stem inside is machined out. So that's very, very cool. And looking at the stem, uh, if you look at the corners, it has the corners rounded off. And the reason why that's very, very important is because if you ever had a chain snap or anything like that, and you've hit your knee right on the stem, if it has a super, super sharp edge on it, what it's actually gonna do is it's actually gonna you know, cut you and you know, make you bleed or create a big bruise because that edge is very, very sharp. It's almost like having a knife there on your bike. So it's very, very dangerous to have that super sharp, sharp edge. So it's, it's very, very cool that they broke that edge with the different style machining on the, on the ed, edge of this. And looking at it, they kind of did it a little bit different, which is really, really cool. It looks like they took a ball end mill and they basically just went around this radius and you can see the actual machine marks in there. So that part is very, very cool. Then they also took that ball mill and um, milled it out on the edge, took a lot of material out of there on both sides. And then on the top, they, they machined it out uh, and then uh, they took an even smaller uh, ball and mill, or yeah, mill, I think that's what it's called. Excuse me if I'm wrong, I haven't been to a machine shop for a long time. But um, yeah, they did it real tight. So in here, it's not a square, you know what I mean, cut. It actually has a little bit of a round radius on it. And then on top of that, they took, probably took that same mill, and then they, they actually put, you know what I mean, the letters O D S Y on there for Odyssey and then Boss right there. So you know it's his stem. So it's super, super cool in that part. And then on the bottom, they machined a lot of this stuff out right here. So it makes the, the stem a lot lighter. And then uh, if you look on the edge right here, it's cool because it, it's kind of like a really thin stem down here and then it thickens up where you're gonna need it to clamp the actual handlebars. So they did that and then they also machined down the edge down here on the bottom. And what makes I mean, one stem look a little bit nicer than the other is when you put these two caps together, you can notice that this cap and this, this stem is actually like almost, actually it's pretty dead on. Like they did a really, really good job on that, that scenario. So, you know, I mean, super, super cool that they have it so smooth and it just looks super uniform and, you know, an awesome job by those guys. And then, yeah, let's, let's pull up this cap and then we'll talk a little bit more about the base of this stem. So, yeah, this stem is actually available in black and polished at the moment. So, you can get it in black, and which is polished, is also getting very popular. And it also uses six millimeter bolts. These are a high quality uh, chromoly bolt, and they have a little washer on there. So, the washer makes it extra cool because if you have a washer on there, it's not an actual, you know, an actual solid piece that's that's being uh, wrenched on, or actually, it's not a rotating uh, bolt that's touching a, a stationary uh, material and then causing it to grind. So it kind of almost makes like a bearing type thing. So when you're tightening down the stem, is nothing's binding up, and you can feel that the the stem's really clamping down 
rather than eating into the material and you not being able to tighten it up enough. And then vice versa, what's, what's cool about that as well is that when taking it off, you don't have that crazy friction on it. You can actually get a, a proper you know, I mean, torque on it. Uh, I noticed also too that these, these bolts are lightly greased. I've seen some of the, some other brands where they just dump it into the grease bucket and then they put it in there and then that grease gets everywhere. Then the grease is getting in between your clamping area and causing your bars to slip. So that, that's very, very cool. Now if you do buy a, a brand new stem or anything like that, make sure that you clean out the the inner part right here and get rid of a lot of the grease because that grease will help it you know, rotate and, and uh, make your bars move all over the place. So like we said, the inside has, has this, uh, let's say a hexagon shape uh, machined out right here. So it's not really a hexagon, it's pretty close though. Uh, but it's all machined out, so this, the base of it's very, very light. So if, just holding this right here makes it extremely light. Another thing I noticed too is that it has a very, very wide uh, clamping slot. A lot of the stems I've seen, they don't have a very wide slot, so by the time you clamp it down, it could actually like pinch, and then it won't tighten up anymore. I've seen this happen a lot on a lot of stock forks. Uh, they have a stock fork, and they crank down on it. You got E-Man over there that's in the corner that just thinks he's got a wrench on everything. We all got a buddy like that. So they put this Allen wrench on there, they grab a crescent wrench, and then they're sitting there wrenching on it. It's you don't have to do that. Just make sure that your fork's clean. Make sure that this, this stem's clean. Um, make sure your bearings are greased, but don't overpack it. Make sure you wipe everything down so that this can get a good grip on it. And then you just use a long you know, Allen wrench like this, and that should you know, be adequate torque to, to actually tighten it up. So that combined with the actual slot, allows you to clamp it down and really, really put some you know, I mean, good torque on it and it won't, it won't slip. But if you're having problems with your stem not staying straight and it keeps turning, maybe you have some stock forks or you have an old set of used forks or anything like that, uh, it, it might be that. So look at your fork. If you see that your fork is actually an oval instead of a circle, then you actually might be needing a new, new set of forks. So definitely take a look at that. Some of the stems have a little pocket on here. A lot of people wrench it out and then it bubbles out. Um, that's just basically, it's, it's over tightened and the stem is kind of worn out, beat up, it's used. It, the parts only have so long to live. So you guys are doing crazy stuff on here. So eventually it's gonna wear out. So keep that in mind. If you've had your stem for a long time or your forks or anything like that and it's doing that, then buy a new set of forks or new stem to try to cure that problem. Um, uh, what else am I gonna say about that? Um, but oh yeah, definitely uh, we noticed too, like when you clamp it down and say you do have like a, a messed up fork and your bars are never straight, um, that could be too is that it clamped it down. Instead of being clamped in a, in a straight angle, you might have had a little bit crooked and clamped it down and then it ovalized it in a weird like angle. So even if you tight, move it again and you tighten it back down, it's gonna tend to kick back to that same side. So if you're having that problem, definitely buy a new set of forks and possibly a stem. But uh, yeah, let's also look right here. See how this has this little curve right here? It's really cool that they have this little this machine um, with the ball in uh, mill and they basically milled it out and uh, gave it a little cool radius right there. So yeah, this base is super, super light. Same thing, side bolts are six millimeter Allen wrench. And six millimeter Allen wrench is a metric size. There's a lot of Allen wrenches probably in your dad's garage. Uh, make sure that it's metric and not American. A quarter wrench or what is it, uh, five sixteenths? Or I can't remember um, off the top of my head. I'm under pressure right now. But a uh, quarter inch is probably the other closest Allen wrench to this. So make sure that it's a six because if you're using the wrong Allen wrench, it will strip out these bolts. Doesn't matter if they're mo made out of chrome molly, they will strip out. But uh, yeah, that, that's the base right there. So let's, let's check out the cap. 
The cap, the same thing. It's got a lot of machining on it. All the ends are, are rounded out. Um, it's machined out here on the top and the bottom of the stem. And like I said, if you match it up, it matches up really, really nice. So that's super, super cool. And then oh, if you look at the inside of the cap, notice that there's a big hole machined out of here. So that, that makes the stem extremely, extremely light. So definitely, definitely pretty cool. And you can see on the inside that it's machined out and it's got a good radius. There's a little trick that these guys do on these stems. I'm not gonna really tell you that because that's kind of a trade, trade secret. But there's a little trick that they do here on, on the actual cap and where the bar actually grips. Um, that is basically how you know if a, a stem is a really good quality stem. If it clamps really good, that's because they know that little secret and it actually makes your, your stem clamp a little bit better. So if it's not a very good brand, usually your bars will tend to slip and stuff like that, or it's worn out. So if your bars are, are pinched or they're ovalized or anything like that and your bars keep slipping into the same spot, that could also be that your bars are high tensile steel or they're old used set of handlebars or they're just old and have taken a beating. So if your bars keep slipping, maybe think about getting a brand new set of handlebars or a brand new stem or, or maybe even both because what happens is those, the base of the handlebar, it gets oval the same way like a fork or it gets a little bubble in it from the little cap um, and it basically causes it to slip. So if you notice on the cap and on the base, these have a super wide profile to it and that what that does is it adds a lot more material to actually touch your handlebar. So even though it's milled out right here and it's milled out right here, you actually have a lot more clamping area. So that makes it real nice with this stem and basically makes it really, really secure. So uh, yeah, that, that, that's what we got to say about the machining and how they actually create it. Let's talk a little bit about the geometry and kind of what makes stems different from the other, other stem. So, a lot of people are wondering, okay, why is this stem different? How come that one's different? Why does that one feel weird? Or why does that one feel good? What's, what's going on? Uh, basically, there's a lot of geometry going on about a stem, and it, it has a lot of detail, and it makes a big difference from, you know I mean, doing a nose manual or riding trails. A lot of the older stems, they traditionally been about 53 millimeter long and they usually had, I don't, I don't even want to say like a rise or anything like that, but uh, mainly like 53 is the, the traditional size that we used to ride. But uh, the, the rise and the actual uh, reach is, is all determined from the center of the, the actual uh, fork tube right here. So the reach is going to be from the center here and it's going to actually go out this far uh, 53 millimeters but this stem is actually 52 millimeters so it's a little bit shorter than most of the other stems or the traditional stems. If you're a tall guy or you ride trails a lot of those guys tend to run a little bit longer like a 53 or a 58 so think of that, take that into consideration. New school guys are running more of like a 50 millimeter or I've seen some start to run a 48. What that does, it helps you with a little bit more nose manuals because what it does is it pushes the bars back a little bit and makes it easier for you to put your weight over the front end and, and lock into it. So when you're thinking about getting a stem, think about the reach. If you're riding trails or park, you're gonna want a little bit longer one. If you're riding like street and you're trying to do nose manuals, you're gonna wanna run it a little bit shorter. Now keep in mind that, that the shorter it is, it's gonna kinda be, how do you say, a little bit tighter and it's gonna, it's gonna be more responsive. If you have a longer stem, it's gonna kinda more do the little swing, kinda like a chopper, chopper front, front wheel. So you're definitely gonna feel that and that's what makes a lot of stems feel different from one stem to the other. So think about what, what you really want the stem to do before just buying it because of the name brighter that it is or the certain brand or oh it's got oil slick you know what I mean think really really think about the geometry and kind of kind of play with stuff if you've only had one stem 
Like you gotta realize that you're not gonna find the best stem like right off the bat. So try a bunch of different stems and go, hey, you know what, I'm looking to try to do this. Let me get a little bit shorter one. Figure out what your stem is right now. See what you're doing. Figure out, you know I mean, from there, what you wanna try to change up from it. So th this reach is 52 millimeters. So the center from the fork here to the center of the bar here is 53 millimeters. That is the reach, so you kind of know about that. Now let's kind of talk about the rise. The rise is a little weird and a lot of people don't kind of get it and um, a lot of factors play into the rise. So let me kind of let you know about that. So the rise is actually from the base of here to the center of the, the handlebar here. Now, that doesn't mean that your bars are higher or lower if you have a higher rise stem or lower rise stem because it also has a big factor on the head tube. So if you have a cap that's a super low on here and you're running your stem here and you got, you got these, this stem and this, this low cap on there, your bars are gonna sit a little bit lower. But if you have a tall cap or you have three or four spacers on here and then you put the stem here, it's gonna make the bars taller. So think about that when you're buying a stem as well. I mean, if you're buying a stem and a headset, you're gonna completely change your game and you're really not gonna know what's, what's affecting you or anything like that. And so keep that in mind when you're buying a stem because the rise is just from here to here. But if you change all those washers, it's really gonna change the actual feel of it. Also too, you gotta realize that all this stuff is just metal. So if you have it lower, what it's gonna do is it's an actual crowbar style, you know what I mean? I guess uh, what you're dealing with because when you have a super low one, it's, it's kinda hard to pull your bars and stuff like that. So basically it, it makes it a little stiffer. Now if you have a bunch of washers and everything on there and you have a real tall you know, I mean, rise stem, what it's gonna do is it's gonna make it feel a little bit flimsier and you're gonna feel a little bit more torque. I don't know if you've seen some of those videos, but the dudes are doing tricks and they basically yank on their bars and their forks snap right off. That's because they're running tons of washers on there and they got their, head, their stem you know, I mean, barely in there and then it snaps off the top. Usually the forks that snap from there, it's, it's because they just run the stem perfect to the inside of the fork. I don't know if you've seen it before, but if you look inside a fork, what they have is some threads in there, and it's usually straight tube and then threads, which is a little bit thicker, and then, you know I mean, the, the fork going, but sometimes that stem just sits right at the perfect spot, and they got, you know I mean, these super tall bars, 10 inch bars, and they're just, you know I mean, yanking on that thing to do pull up manuals or do a 180 or, you know I mean, just, just wrenching on their bike and that's what causes it to snap. So when you're getting a stem and you're looking for the rise, think about all those factors before actually making a purchase. So this stem here is a 35 millimeter rise and this one is kind of a, this is one of the taller, taller rises. So it makes it really cool that it's so tall. So instead of running more washers, you can actually just run a taller rise. And then what it does is it pulls it down, makes it a little bit stiffer, but also gives you that reach where you want, you know what I mean, on your handlebar. So it brings it up a lot. So that's, a, that's very cool. Well, a couple of our team riders have been looking at stems and they wanted something a little bit taller. And this has been like the best quality stem that we've seen at this rise. And it's just, you know what I mean, just a cool setup. Aaron Ross rides his, his bars pretty tall and he likes more of an upright feel to it. And you can see it in his riding. So you know that's definitely why he made this such a high rise. So very cool from him, uh, you know what I mean, for doing that. And very cool of Odyssey listening to him and putting those details into this. So if you're looking to, to get a Aaron Ross uh, signature boss stem, definitely check out our website. On our website, as always, any of these stems fit any of the complete bikes. They fit any of our forks, and you can just make to match everything on our website. So check out Stack BMX Shop, support our shop, you know what I mean, so that we can keep doing these videos, explain a little bit more, and just keep growing this stuff. So we're talking about growing. We want to grow this, this YouTube channel. We've been trying to get a lot of people to subscribe to us. We've been trying to share our information with them, try to give them a little bit more than just your average you know, video. So you know, we want you to subscribe to our channel 
but in return what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you guys a free parts package from all the brands that we carry here in the shop so all you got to do is subscribe to our channel like this video comment below tell us something about you know I mean what you liked about the video what you didn't like about the video why you subscribe to our channel um, anything that you see in the background any anything you like just say hey what's up and what we're gonna do is we're gonna give away a free parts package when we hit a thousand subscribers we're pretty close I think we're at like 807 or something like that so if you can help us get to there we're almost there so definitely help us get to there um, that'd be very cool and then also we want you to to turn on your notification bells because every time we drop a new video, which is every day, you guys get a notification, then it gives you another chance to enter. So go on there, enter, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through our videos, randomly pick a video, go through the comments, come randomly pick a comment, see if we like their comment, read it, you know, I mean take a look at it, go, okay, this kid, you know, I mean knows about BMX, he's trying to give it, get into it. Yeah, it's a good candidate, and we're gonna pick them to win something just kind of randomly but at the same time, not randomly. So make sure you comment below, let us know what you like about these videos. And then also too, we want you to share this video because what that's gonna do is gonna help us get to, you know I mean, 1,000 uh, subscribers faster. And then it's also gonna help us get to 5,000 subscribers faster. So when we hit 5,000 subscribers, we're gonna give away a free bicycle retailed at $300. So that'll definitely help you out or help out somebody that you're trying to get into riding or maybe your bike got stolen and you need a new bike, this is an easy way to do something for free and help us out. But uh, yeah, subscribe to our channel, like it, share it, turn on your notification bells, and support Stack BMX, because we want to give you guys a, uh, a complete bike or a bunch of parts from all the brands that we carry. And like, like always, we like to thank you for watching our videos, we appreciate you. Thanks for everybody that supports our shop and buys from Stack BMX. We see those orders coming in and every time we see a new order, it hypes us up, it makes us really happy. And that's what makes us come out to these, or come out and do these videos. And that's why we look so happy in these videos is because we actually see your support and that's great energy for us. And we wanna give that back to you. So keep on riding, have a good time and do as much as you can and just express yourself how, how you want and show the world that you just love life and you definitely appreciate everything that's here. So thanks a lot again and we'll see you guys tomorrow.